In today's video, we are going to go into a race. Let's get to it. So if you're new here, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And you can see more content from me, such as these intro videos and a lot more coding tutorials. So within this topic, we are going to go into arrays, which is really different data type than the other data types we talked about before. And if you haven't seen my data type videos, go ahead and click on that video first and watch it just so you know what's going on in this video. And I'll put that link inside of the description below. Essentially what array is, is a collection of objects. It's just a collection of items. And you're able to hold a bunch of items inside of this array and you're able to do multiple things with them. So before we go into that more in depth, I'll actually show you how they are defined or how you can create an array. So with an array, you can do it two ways. And again, this is really depending on your programming language, but typically you will have some sort of an array class. So you can use that array class and create a new array or the most common way. And you'll see this in a lot of places is this box bracket here. So you can do the class naming here, or you can do it with the box brackets. And with this, you can see that we're able to store a lot of values inside of the array. A lot of items, a lot of items such as strings, like what we have here in this first one and second one. And then going forward, I'm just gonna use the box brackets just because that's a more common way. And you can see here, these are the exact same array. It's just defined differently. You can also have arrays of integers and in other languages, you can have multiple types inside of an array, even arrays inside of an array. Occasionally you would see arrays be defined like this laterally. And to be honest with this way versus this horizontal way, they're actually the same thing. Most people just type them like this just for readability's sake. So these two are the exact same thing. They're still considered arrays and you're, they still work as arrays. So you're able to store a bunch of items in there and it doesn't necessarily have to be the same data type depending on your programming language. Now let's go into positioning. Now go ahead and pause the video and think about how would you get this element B here? This element B here. Welcome back. So to get this element B is essentially how you would grab an item outside of a box. You would just grab it by some sort of position. And you may be thinking of the position something like this, right? One, two, three, four. And to grab B, it would be the second position. Well, inside of arrays, we are going to change the terminology a bit and call it indexing instead. But Indexing works a little bit differently in arrays. Typically, we actually don't start with the number one when we go into the position number inside of an array. We actually start off with something different. So even though that we want this element here, which is the second position, the index number is not really two. Here's the actual index number. It actually starts off as zero, and then one, two, three. So it's a zero base count. So essentially the first one is position zero, second one, one, third, two, et cetera. And the reason why this is, is that way back then when coding was first introduced inside of machine learning, is that when items are stored inside of the computer, they're stored inside of these boxes per se. And with these boxes, technically you have these items here inside of the box. But back then, when you first start on an item, the typical number for the first item is zero because of binary and all, a lot of things back then as well. So that's why when they are counting, they actually start off at zero and then one, et cetera. And also technically you could start at one and then go forward but then you still have this extra piece of storage here that you're not using. So to make that even more useful, that's why you start at zero. So that 
is another reason why the indexing is zero base instead of the numeric value like normal. So going back to that, the position of each of the elements is zero base from left to right. And order does matter. If you change the order of these items, then they have different types of position or different types of indexing, depending on where they are. If I change this to C and that one to B, then the index of B would then be two. So the position or index will always be the same, but the elements in the array can be different. And it really matters because of the index or the position. So if I want to grab the item of B here, it will be with the index of one. Now let's talk about size and length of an array. And this is typically how big an array is or how many items can this certain array hold. And in some languages, they're already predefined or they're predefined when you create them. In other languages, they grow as the more items you put in them. So typically the size is how many items you're able to fit inside of this array. For this particular case, the size is four. You're able to fit four values inside of this array. Now see how that number is different than this number here. Again, this number is the index or the position. This number is actually the number of how many items are in the array. And sometimes the size is re referred to length and length could mean size. It could also mean how many index it could hold. That really depends on the programming language as well. So just note that size means how many elements that are inside of the particular array. Now to get an item, going back to index, you just refer to the index of the item you want to grab. So if I want to grab B, I would refer to the index of one. And typically the syntax for that, the symbols that you would do that is the reference of the array, in this case is ARR, and inside of box brackets, the index of the value you want, in this case is one. So with the R, index of one, that will then return the string of B. So typically when you want the value, it would be referenced by the index. Now we'll go into something a little bit tougher. If you see this, we have an array inside of another array. If we want to grab the value of C, then what we would do is we would treat it as the outer and then the inner array second. So the outer array, the position of each element is zero, one, two, because this whole array is its own element. So zero, one, two. So to go inside of this array here, the first index that you would do is two. That's what we have two here. The second thing is that since this is also an array, the indexing starts over here again. So then it's zero and then one, zero and then one. So to grab C, it's actually the index of one here. And that is why we have a one here. So to grab the element C with the array inside of another array is you have to reference both arrays. First you go outer and then the inner array. And then finally your final destination of C here. If you have even more arrays embedded, so if you have an array inside of an array inside of another array, again, just follow this technique and you're supposed to go outside it. Just treat each array as his own array at a time. Now, let's say that we want to run some logic with the elements of the array. And there's a few ways you can do that. The first way is, what if you want to use the index value? And that works for this particular case, right? So if you want to print out each of the letters here, each of the strings, you would just reference them by index. So 0, 1, 2, I will print out A, B, C. But again, this only works for this case. What if you have an array of 50 elements? Or you got to do this 50 times. What if you have an array of 100 elements? Or what if you don't even know the length of the array, right? So this works, but it only works for this specific case. A better way to do it is that you need to iterate through the array so it works for any array that you plug it into. And let me show you how iteration works. 
And there's multiple ways you can iterate. There's mapping, there's looping, and other functions that you can use. The most common one I use is the dot map function from Ruby or JavaScript, whatever language I'm using. And typically how this works is that any array that I plug in inside of this map, I'm able to reference each element of the array as something I define it as. And then I am able to print logic out like I want to. For this example, I am printing out each of the letters. So the first thing that it will do is it will go to the first element, which is index of zero, and it will then be the string of A is now this here. And what this is, is just a placeholder or a argument that represents what you're calling each of these elements when you're iterating through them. And technically you can call this whatever you want. You can call it X, you can call it letter, you can call it number, pizza if you want it to, but it's good to be descriptive at this case, whatever makes more sense. So in this case, I'm calling each one of these elements as letter because technically there are letters. And what I'm doing is that as I'm going through each of the index, A inside of a string is letter now. So I'm technically printing out A. And then the next iteration is B. So now letter is B, print out B. And the next iteration, C, this is letter now C, and then C. And as you can see here, this is a broad way of how you can iterate through any array. I can plug in another array, whether it is 50 elements big, or if it's 100, or even if I don't know how big the array is, this way will always work no matter what. So this is actually a better way to go through each of your elements of your array, and you're able to do some sort of logic. In this case, I actually print out each of the letters. And that is iteration. Now in this example, you can see that even if I don't know the length of the array, I know that there's one, two, three, four, or however many, this still works. It will still continue on going until it hits the end or until you have some sort of an error. So this iteration of map will still work regardless of how big the array is and how different the array is. Now let's wrap up what we covered so far. So an array is just a collection of objects. It's a collection of items. You're able to store a bunch of items inside of an array and typically they are symbolized by inside of box brackets and separated each element by a comma. Index refers to the position of each element in the array. And position does matter because the first element is always the index of zero because it's zero base. So you count from zero going forward. Iterate means that you're going through each of the items in the array. And you might be able to do some sort of logic with each of the items, like printing it out, adding and totaling, things like that, some sort of logic. And the best iteration will work for any array, not just the array that you test around with. It will actually work for every single array. And size is how many items an array can hold. So what will you be doing with this information? Well, let me show you. Let me show you a good use case of an array and a much more live example that you can be using. Typically, you wouldn't have an array of strings or an array of integers. Um, you would have something more complex, like an array of hashes. And we'll go into hashes in another video. But each hash represents a person or represents a user. And what you can do with this is you can do multiple things with it. You can see that for each of these items, you can iterate through all of the items and you can print out their names of each of the users. You can total up the age if you want to and print out any other information that you want. You can also reference each user by index value or even see how many users there are inside of your database or inside of your website. So an array is a, actually a much more powerful tool than you realize and they're actually used for a lot of things in the real world. And go ahead and play around with them in your own choice of language. And they're typically different in every single language, but the keywords and how they work and how they interact with, they are all transferable. And this can actually 
transfer to almost any single languages, these elements right here. So without further ado, I will see you all in the next video. See ya. Thank you.